beginning of this theater was 1964, what, 65, when the doors were open. And they had a very troubled first 25 years and went through four or five, man four managements, we were the fifth. And the four, management four managements used up the first 24 years. And everybody kind of beat their fists against it and couldn't make it work. And so it seemed to be an unworkable theater, and there was talk about making it into a multiplex or a cinema. And I always thought, well, if we get the right Indian tribe, we could make it into a casino. That would be nice at Lincoln Center. And then we, beginning 24 years ago, found the secret and unlocked the mystery of the Beaumont Theater, the theater at Lincoln Center. And the secret of the Beaumont has always been to accept the given and then see what needs to be done with the given. And the given is the building. What you begin with is this, uh, this piece of real estate, this commanding reality of the building with its two theaters, soon to be three, and say, well, what do you make of this? What do you need? What do you need to make it work? And then you balance out those, those elements that comprise the theater, which are only four. There are four elements in my view. And the four elements are a place. We were given the place. Uh, artists, and the artists existed all around us because we're in New York City. Money, and money had to be figured out. And an audience. And if you take those four elements, which are the key elements, it seems to me, of any theater, how you mix them, how you adjust them, how you administer them, is the secret of success or failure in a given theater at a given moment. I think that the best thing that we had going for us was attitude that was outside the bounds of convention. We didn't intend to make this theater, Gregory and I, as we came together and didn't formulate a theory, there was nothing that, uh, that precise or that intellectual or that academic, I must add. It was, uh, okay, here's what we got. We got the Mitzi and we got the Beaumont and we've got just under a million dollars. That was the, the capital with which we started. I think it was $900,000. And what could we do? And we said, well, with that amount of money, we can't open the Beaumont. But let's do a couple of plays at the Mitzi. The first were two one acts by David Mamet, Prairie de Chine and the Shaw. And that was certainly a moment because we opened the Lincoln Center Theater for the fifth time it was opening yet. And each prior time, it had gone down in, into uh, uh, disrepute. And the two plays were greeted by the critic of the New York Times, Frank Rich, by saying, we understand opening Lincoln Center Theater after all these years modestly, but, and this is engraved in my memory, uh, but this is modesty to a fault, were the words he used. And so very bravely, we ran out the eight week runs we had scheduled and we had a few, you know, few people in the audience from night to night. And uh, we got on to the second play, which was the first revival of John Guare's The House of Blue Leaves. Did I say directed by Jerry Zaks to a turn with Swoozie Kurtz and John Mahoney and Dr. Channing, for starters, and Christopher Walken. And it was a sensation. It was just a play whose moment had arrived. There are nuns, bananas, nuns! We got locked out of the upstairs room! Hi! Hey! Oh, this is Corinna Strollin, Billy's girlfriend. Corinna, this is bananas. Corinna Strollin, the movie star? Hello, Billy's girlfriend. God, Billy's girlfriends always make me feel so shabby. <laughs> Half who believes in keeping family skeletons out in the open like pets. Heal, bananas, heal. <laughs> I saw The Sound of Music 31 times. It changed my entire life. Unitarian! <laughs> the audience response, after the critical response, was so great that scratching our heads, we said, what are we gonna do there? Too many people wanting to buy tickets and there aren't enough. What a problem to have. And we happened to have an empty theater upstairs at the Beaumont and we said, in one mystery day of head scratching, what should we do? We said, why don't we move it to the Beaumont? And we took the actors up on stage and took the playwright up on stage and the director and had them walk around the dark and empty Beaumont that had been dark for quite some time by then and said, uh, what do you think? And they said, well, there's a problem with the Beaumont. Everybody says it's an impossible house and a play, we have a play that's succeeding so well and there's a rule in the theater, as in life, which is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the House of Blue Leaves is not broke. 
And um, we said, well, that's true, but on the other hand, if we were to move it up here, and if we could open it here, there seems to be an audience for it of scale. And not only that, we'd be eligible for Tonys, and that was the magic word that we dropped among them. So they walked around the stage and looked at the house, and suddenly some, one of them said, well, the only one of us who's ever played here is Chris Walken. And Chris, what's wrong with this theater? Why does everybody have so much trouble with it? And Chris said, well, the problem is you walk out on stage and you see all these empty red seats. And so it's discouraging, so it's hard to, it's hard to act in this theater. And we said very gently, but we wouldn't have empty red seats because the audience response to the play is such that we think all the empty seats will be filled. He said, no problem. And that was the moment of decision combined with the magic word Tony. And in fact, the show was nominated for seven or eight Tonys and won, I think, four of them at that time. And that was the, uh, the true launch of Lincoln Center Theatre.